Praise the Lord. Um, I bring you greetings again from Glasgow. Um, and um, all the brethren of the family in Glasgow extend their greetings. Amen. Amen. And I want to salute um, our mighty elders um, for the wonderful work which is being done here. I want to speak briefly and then we'll pray. Um, a very short word, but I believe is profound. Amen. I want to talk to us today about understanding the timeline of God. Understanding the timeline of God. Very popular scripture. I know many of us know by heart. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. For every uh, thing there is a season. Are you putting it on there? For everything there is a season. There's time for every purpose under heaven. Amen. So there's always seasons and time. As long as the earth remains, there shall be the seed time and the harvest. There's always seasons um, in, in the physical and also in the spiritual. There's always a reason why um, Jesus always referred to the agriculture system, um, the sower, sow the sea, and he used those expressions quite a lot because you can't really beat the, uh, that, that system. You can easily beat the social system. Um, you can beat the system. Many of us, when we were in schools, didn't really learn. And then towards the exams, you study hard, and you pass, and you beat the system. Because it requires that you stay so long on your studies. But sometimes you're able to be this. But for seasons and times, many a times there are certain things that must happen in a certain season. And you can't just beat it. You have to understand the season and the time. First Chronicles 12, verse 32. He says, and the children of Issachar understood the times, and they knew what Israel ought to do at every given time. They understood the time. Today, I want us to look at somebody who understood the timing of God, and we, will, we pray that God speak to us through the life of this person. 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. And I read from verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall, be, there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word. Amen. I will just add the verse 2 and 3. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Kirith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. These days, especially uh, when COVID first hit, you had so many people coming out, prophets. And what they were saying is that, oh, I saw this two years ago. I saw it, that thing which I said, that there will be some sickness. That is the COVID. And so we had many of them coming after the COVID had hit to give us explanation to what they saw, which none of us knew. Post-mortem prophecies. After it's happened, then people come out to show us that um, I saw it. 
Isaiah chapter, can you put this for me? Isaiah chapter 48, verse 5. Can you put that on for me? And it will be, wait, okay. Even from the beginning, I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I have pro proclaimed it to you. Lest you should say, my idol has done them and my carved images and my molded images have commanded them. What the Lord is saying is that before it will happen, I told you. It means that the Lord knows the end from the beginning, and so he's able to declare unto us. We don't wait until after it's finished to come and boldly declare that I saw it in my bedroom. There's no proof. There's no proof. There's a lot of a lot of, you know, prophets and people that make up things after we have seen it happen. And so a lot of people are telling us, this is the end times. Why? Because COVID happened. God is judging the world. Why? Because COVID happened. So is it because we know from the beginning what God has declared? Do we understand what God is saying in this time? Or is it just because some things have happened? And we try to, you know, <laughs> massage the message a little bit so that we prove that we too, we knew it. So Elijah the Tishbite came unto Ahab. Ahab is one of the most wicked kings in the life of Israel. In fact, if you read the chapter before that, in 1 Kings chapter... 16 verse 30 and, and 31. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a life thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, that he took the wife Jezebel, the daughter of Idbar, king of Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. If you read 33, it says, And Ahab made grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Wow, what a record. The guy did so much evil than every person that had. And if you think of Jeroboam, these were the guys, you know, who, who were sacrificing to the idols. In fact, they were human sacrifices. And Ahab did more evil than all these people. That's a record. <laughs> to the extent that even now, his wife, the spirit of Jezebel, is at work today. Their standard was so high that even in Revelation, we will see the spirit of Jezebel, which means you, you have to understand the kind of environment that Elijah the Tishbite was in. And Elijah the Tishbite did not wait until things is as though the seasons were changing, climate change, and the rains were reducing. Say, oh, there will be no rain. Elijah the Tishbite waited until there was a lot of rain. The wells were full. The fields were green. And it came that, according to my word, there shall be no rain or dew. And you, you ask yourself, there's something as I look into the scripture, where does he get this from? We know for certain the verse 2, it says, And the Lord, word of the Lord came unto him that go to the brook in Kirin. So, for the first time, where did he get this from? From where does he get this boldness to come before Ahab, the most wicked king? In fact, they had killed the prophets of the Lord. If you want to check the record of Ahab and Jezebel, they had killed the prophets of the Lord. And Obadiah had hidden a few of them. They were so wicked. In fact, idolatry was state-sponsored. There were 
400 prophets of Baal, 450 prophets of, of the grove, which were sponsored by the state. So you couldn't have this anywhere in the history of, of Israel. And then Elijah shows up. One thing which is unique about Elijah, if you read the accounts of the many of the prophets that were in the Bible, you have Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah. You have um, Ezekiel, the son of Bazi. You have many of the prophets, anytime they are mentioned, it tells off of their genealogy, where they had been. Like Amos says that I was neither a prophet nor a son of a prophet. I, I was a keeper of sheep, and I kept the sycamore tree. But the word of the Lord came unto me and says, go and speak to my people Israel. So like him, Elijah, the reason why we got to know of Elijah was not because of his heritage, of his parents, or of where he had come from. It's just because he had the word of the Lord. And he came with the word of the Lord with boldness before Ahab. This is a man with record of wickedness and evil. The question I ask myself again, where did he get this from? How I wish, see, all of us, if you were there and you had a dream, and the word of the Lord came and you saw that, oh, behold, there's going to be famine. Rise up, son of man, and go and tell Ahab. That would have been very easy. There is a reason why the Bible says in the book of, of James chapter 5, verse 17, that Elijah was a man with like passions as we are, and he prayed that there would be no rain for three and a half years, and there was no rain. Why does the Bible say so? Why didn't he use Moses? That Moses was a man with like passions, and he went to Pharaoh, and he prayed that, let my people go. Why? Because God had already shown this unto Moses. God had called Moses and revealed what he was about to do to him. For Elijah, it was different. He came with the word of the Lord with boldness, and he prayed that he would see the end of that which he had declared. Where does he get this from? Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16 to 17. Put it there for me. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16 to 17. Okay. This is what the law says. Take heed to yourself, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Go on. Lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Now, this is a warning that God gave to the children of Israel when they come in with Moses. And he says that if there is a season in your life, if there's such a time that you turn away from God and you worship other gods, then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you and he will shut up the heavens so that there will be no rain and the land will yield no fruit. So we are talking about a season that they had turned away from God. They had turned away to worship other gods. Not only were they worshiping other gods individually, the whole state was sponsor, sponsoring the worship of other gods. And so if you could see these things, okay, where the people worshiping other gods take, if they're worshiping other gods, with the anger of the Lord kindled against them, take. So when you see this happens, then there's going to be no rain. Do you know that if Elijah had prophesied this in any other season, when the people were wholeheartedly worshiping God, it wouldn't work. Do you know that if it were the time of David, 
when they had, when they were worshiping God, David was a man after my own heart, God says. In, in the time of David that they were worshiping God with all their hearts and rejoicing before God, that would not have worked. But it so happened that in this season that Elijah, I, I believe that Elijah looked into the word of God and he sees that these people, according to God's word, were worshiping other gods. And it's obvious that the anger of the Lord, and so if you read the verse before Elijah showed up, it clearly says that they worship other gods, and Ahab did much evil. And you read 33, Ahab made a, a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings that were before him. So the anger of the Lord was kingdom. Elijah sees and understands the season that he's in. And he realized that the people, everything that God has said will come to pass if these people were to turn away from him. The season was ripe for such a prophecy. There was a time when the children, um, uh, the, the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and if you read Luke chapter 9, verse 54. And they came to Jesus when Jesus was passing through Samaria. And, and, and then the people said, no, we wouldn't allow you because he had made his face as though he's going to Jerusalem. And they were enemies, so they said that they would not allow Jesus to go through Samaria. Then James and John were saying that, Lord, allow us so that we will command fire from heaven to come and bring these people, just as Elijah did. Now, this is what Jesus said. He said, you don't know the, the, the man of spirit you have been called into. The son of man came to save and not to destroy. Why? In this dispensation, the son of man was there. It was not the time to call for fire. That wouldn't have worked. Because it has to come to a certain season, which means that the reason why our words are falling, the reason why we, we desire, we want to declare things of God, and it doesn't happen is because we miss the timing of God. So Elijah could see everything which had been prophesied, that if the king, children of Israel went into that, then there would be no rain. So he came. He said, according to my word, there will be no rain. Even if God has spoken to him before, he took boldness to stand before Ahab. Now look at what God had done. Do you know that the Bible says that after he declared that, the word of the Lord came to him. It says, go to, to the brook Kirith. After he declared that, Many of us are waiting until we will have the whole vision. We will see that, well, if you come to Edinburgh and you do this and you do that and you see until 20 years' time before you can take an action. But see, how God does his work is that until you have completed the first task, he was not speaking. Until Elijah had gone boldly to Ahab, God did not say anything. When you complete the first task of obeying God's word, when Elijah saw in the word of God that which had happened and took hold of it and boldly declared it, then God spoke. So many of us, maybe God has spoken something into your heart, but you're waiting to see three visions, four dreams. You are waiting to have another prophet to come and declare it unto you. But see, God waits until you take the first step. Then God is silent. See, God, how many of us have got the word of the Lord? Elijah had the word of God, and that pushed him to a certain pedestal. Maybe you would not have known Elijah the Tishbite if he had not come boldly, because that is the only introduction of a major prophet like Elijah. Not because he was in the school of prophets, 
Not because Elijah the Tishbite went and met ministerial team and passed an exam or, or passed an interview, but it was because he carried the word of the Lord. And because he carried the word of God, that transformed his life. But God was waiting for Elijah the Tishbite to take the first step to declare the word of the Lord, and then God spoke to him. If you read the Bible, you will see some of these things, a number of them happen. One thing that I'd like to mention today, if you read um, a book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it was talking about when Jesus was born and wise men came from the east. Other version says Magi. And this Magi, in other words, they were astrologers. These are people who observe the times. But the Bible clearly says in Leviticus 19 that observing the times is an abomination unto God. So why is it that people who observe the times, who are astrologers, came and saw Jesus in Matthew chapter 2? Why? Why, why would God use people who are doing things which are abominable unto God. Second Kings talks about Manasseh. Manasseh was also an evil king who did much evil, and the Bible says he observed the times which was abomination unto God. Then why is, if observing the times is abomination unto God, why did God use the Magi to come to reveal the coming of the Messiah? Again, if you read, you know, the Magi, it means they came from the east. It says the wise men from the east. From the east means where from the east? This was the region of, of, of Babylonia where, where Daniel had been. You read in Daniel chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, Daniel has such an influence of the wise men of the east. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 47 to 48, Daniel became the leader of the wise men. Daniel 4, 8 to 9, he became, the, he was referred to as the master of the magicians. And so, why, you, you're looking at the account of Jesus' birth. Wise men are coming. Where is this wise man coming from? These were people who had, influenced by Daniel and the teachings of Daniel. They saw in the books, in the writings of Daniel, if you read Daniel chapter 9, if you read verse 24 to 26, Daniel predicted the timing of the Messiah. He even predicted when the Messiah would die. So the wise men had record of the word of God. They, as they studied the word of God and they saw that, woo the Messiah will be born in such a season like this. So as they understood that season and the time, the Lord then showed them and led them by a star. Understanding the season. So all the seasons that we're talking about, they are prophecies or that which had been declared in the word of God. So the how many things have God said to us in his word? And we're all looking for the word of God somewhere to come from somewhere. And you got the word of the Lord. Many years ago, I was at a meeting, and a very famous uh, preacher in Ghana, and he was prophesying. And he said, oh, there are some of you here, you have linked with, with UN, and all the young ladies, they say, ah, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what happened? When the prophecies comes like, Shoo! I, did, I don't get any. I, I, I see people, you know, people, anytime they say something, go, yay! And I, I was going home really sad. And I'm saying to myself, why come that? Anytime I, I go to some of these meetings, all the prophecies bypass me. And the Spirit of the Lord says, how much more do you want to know that I have not already told you? 
So we are looking for some word somewhere that if a prophet will come, if I could see a green cat with a beard, then I will know that God is speaking. <laughs> Elijah the Tishbite, he took hold of God's word and he said that there will be no rain. Why? Because God's word has said that in that season and in that timing, if there be such a season that the children of Israel were disobedient unto God, then there will be no rain. So today, I want to ask a question. What kind of season are we in? And what timing? What a timing are we in? And that's so important. Either than that, we, we try hard. If you miss the season of God, then we are declaring. I, I remember years ago, I was a young man in junior high school. There was this guy who was preaching, and he had people around him. And so myself and a few of my friends, we went to stand there looking at them. And this guy looked at us and said that, you, this, if you have come here not to participate, just to observe, you will not reach home. You will die. You'll be knocked down by a car. I'm, I'm still alive. See, you can't curse him that God has blessed. If you don't understand the season, they saw a lot of people are saying things, empty words, because it's not according to what God has declared, and that's not much up into the season that we're in. John 3, 17, For the Son of Man did not come to destroy the world, but through him the world might be saved. So we're proclaiming a lot of distraction. This is, these days, if you want to be a popular prophet, then curses and curses and curses. But God says that let blessing comes out of your mouth, not curses. And so we have a lot of people. That is why the Bible says that at the end time, he says that get away from me, you evildoers, for I did not know. Yes, and God, but we prophesy in your name. It is not according to the season and the timing of God and what he had declared in his word. So, what time are we in? Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. If you can help me with that. What time are we in? Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Okay. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Now, one, if you think that we are not in the last days, you need to be born again. <laughs> okay, so how would we know that we are in the last days? Again, listening very carefully, as I said, Elijah looked at the season and the timings of what was happening and was taking whether it was time to declare a certain word of the Lord. As I said, there are certain things if you declare. You know, if you read 2 um, Corinthians chapter 3, it says, because of this hope, we have this plainness of speech. Because of what we are seeing in the word, we have this boldness of speech. Why? Because God's word has said it and the timing and the season is right. Amen. Okay. So this is what we see in the last days. For men will be lovers of themselves. Is that true? Are we seeing this? In fact, selfishness is at this highest peak in the world. This is what we teach our children. It's no more believe in God. Believe in yourself. That is a great speech that will give you uh, uh, Loretta Ward. Believe in yourself. It's good, but it's dangerous. We have to come to God that we, uh, time and again that we put our faith in God. Believe in God. That 
is, is, is okay now. Abstract. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Is that true? Boasters. Is that true? This is the season that we're in. Some people are so proud of their demons, they call it pride, and they walk up showing their demons on streets. Is that true? Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self control. It's, these things are so. It, it, our sins to someone. We are living in a time that the word of God is happening so fast. We are seeing, we are seeing things that God has declared. Where, 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 was there any time in our lives when God said a thousand will fall on your left hand and ten thousand will fall at your right hand and will not come near you? We you know what happened in the last two years. We are seeing the word of God he says to Jeremiah, what do you see? I see a, a rod of a tree. And he said, this is my word, which is, I'm, I'm about to hasten to do. So everything is being hastened before our eyes. We are in a certain season and a certain time. Go, go, go and do that scripture. So the spices of good, traitors, Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God. Years ago, on a Sunday like this, in England, in Scotland, in Wales, I tell you, if you hear the story of the Wales Revival, people could not go to the pubs. They, they, they will buy beer and their hands will be frozen. The places were jammed. Now people have pleasure. If you ever see people in a queue, they're going to the pub, not to church. Lovers of pleasure and not lovers of God. And so this shows us that we are in the last days. Because he said that in the last days, these things will happen. So that is an indication of something which is about to happen in the last days. If you read Luke 21, 8 to 11, he talks about more, about earthquake, about pestilence. Pestilence? Really? Pestilence? Look at what we've gone through. Pestilence. So if you're not careful, do you know that in this time, when Elijah declared the word of the Lord, a lot more prophets were hidden. When Elijah wanted to die, God said, listen, I've hidden, I have a lot of prophets who have not bowed their knees. How come none of them declare the word of the Lord? Which means that there were a number of them were there. They were not as bold as Elijah to declare that word. So, now we are seizing, we are seeing that we are Taking everything that signify the last days. So what must we expect in the last days? Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Now, we have, um, we have taken everything that indicates that we are in the last days. So if we are in the last days, then we have this boldness to come to know that this is what God is saying in the last days. Amen. It's important we understand the season before we declare the word. And so it shall come to pass in the last days, and we Every one of here, we can agree that we are in the last days. What is God going to do in the last days? He says that 
says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Wow. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Amen. So, knowing that we are in the last days, then I'm, I am in expectation that my little children are about to prophesy like never before. Do you know that a lot of Christians in the time of, a lot of Christians who go through this season and will miss it, will not know. When you say prophecy, they say, oh, those days of Apostle Walker and Machio. <laughs> what is happening in these last days and in the season that we are in? What is happening? He says that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So what will happen when God pours out his spirit upon all flesh? See, he does not leave the message vague. He tells us that after God has poured his spirit upon our flesh, this is what happened. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Do you know that when Elijah saw the word of the Lord, and he declared it, he gave himself no rest until he saw the end of that word. That is why in James 17, that Elijah was a man we lack passions as we are. Yet he prayed that there would be no rain. So when he declared the word of the Lord, seeing what had been prophesied in the season, then he said no. This is what Daniel did. Daniel saw the timing of the Lord, that a time is coming that the children of Israel, having been in captivity, after 70 years will be liberated. After 70 years, he was not seeing anything. So he went into fasting. For 21 days, he was seeking God. Why? That which he had seen of the season and the timing was not coming to pass until God gave him a word to answer. So we are seeing the last days. Tick. Disobedience. Tick. Prideful. Tick. We are seeing all these times. And the word of the Lord is saying that I'm about to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Not the elders, not the deacons, not the pastor. All flesh that your sons and daughters will prophesy. See, when I first got to know this word, my thinking was that, you know when you say your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. And many a times our mentality is that and, and I, I was number one. I thought that perhaps when you are old and you've got nothing to eat, perhaps you retire and you buy some newspaper, you sit in a rocking chair and you've got nothing and all you do is to dream. Dream. And because of this mentality, I've heard a lot of preachers say, and they, they say, oh, as for me, I don't dream. I only see visions. As though that dreams is, is cheap, is, is for old people. So if you want to show that you are vibrant, then I see visions. But this is not what God is saying. Do you know that dreams is prophetic? You know, we read this account when God speaks to Solomon. And God is saying to him, Solomon is encountering God and he asks for wisdom. And God said, you've chosen rather us. These were all dreams. Read many of the accounts of Elijah when he's declaring the prophets. They were dreams. Then why are we trying to say that dream is some cheap thing and you want to advance and you go to visions? I was thinking of these things and the, the Spirit of God brought me understanding when I was speaking to my daughter and asking her, what would you do in the future? I want to be a queen, a builder, Berlina, a doctor. She had about seven things she wants to do. Wow, dream. She's dreaming big. 
I've asked young children before, what do you want to do? I want to be an astronaut. But you get to a certain stage in your life, they say astronauts, oh, this day, you know, cash, <laughs> there's no cash. I want to be an engineer. And then you face GCSE. And you see, ah, this mathematics self, let's drop engineering. <laughs> now I want to do physics. Then you go and you face more applied maths and say, this physics class, there's no money. Drop it. So that somebody starts with dream of doing seven things. By the time you face the circumstance of life, your dream is fading. You don't dream the same way. Nah. What the kids believe, after you face, and so when we came to this church, I believe the church has gone many years and we start. When you have gone through the timing in the church, and then you find out that uh, this pastor cry is inconsistent, uh, that A is a hypocrite, sister C is a liar, and then because of issues and things, then the dream, when we started, God is about to shake Edinburgh. We're going to see revival. After a few years, then that dream is going down because you're becoming too old because of experience. Experience can shift your dream so that you are not seen as a young person. That is why God is saying that a time is coming when the Spirit of God is poured out that even old men will begin to dream again. Now, an old person is saying, yes, I'm going to be a doctor, not because you have gone through the timings and your dream has failed. Why? A new spirit of quickening and awakening comes that we could dream again. We still can declare that God is about to shake Edinburgh, not because we tried it, and so oh, these people, we've seen it before. We've seen it before. But what season and the time are we in? For this reason, because of this hope, we have this plainness of speech. We have this boldness to declare that this is the time and the season of the outpouring of God. Why? Because we can tick every box. We pick every signal. So knowing that this is indeed the season and this is indeed the timing when God is about to pour out the Spirit our flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. I ask myself, oh, he says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. By the grace of God, my parents are alive, so sons and daughters, I am in. Even if my parents were not alive, I have a spiritual father, I am in. I will all, all the children of God, I am in. Young men, Caleb said that as, as yet I am as strong this day, like in the days that Moses sent me both to go to war. Now, he, he, he was 80 years old at this time. 80 years. In the days of his youth, he was 40 years, which means that young men, he said he had the same, comp- if you are not 80 years, young men, you are in. So we are in. Sons and daughters, we are in. Old men who dream dreams. If you've ever lost dream before, you are in. Because with season and time, experience makes you drop some of your dreams. Old men, we are in. So if it's dream, we are taking it. It's a prophecy, we are taking it. It's visions, we are there. Let us come to this place with all aggression and zeal that God, that what you have said in your word, I want to be a partaker, I want to see. This is the attitude of Elijah. If you read the account of Elijah, see, when you read the book of James 5.17, when it goes like, oh, Elijah was um, a man with like passions and he prayed that there would be no rain for three and a half years, and he prayed again, and there was rain. That was, not happening at, that was not what happened at all. For seven times, he was praying. He's sending the seven, go and check. 
And he goes back and forth, and he said, oh, I see a cloud like a man's face. The man was not giving up. And so this season, Edinburgh, until we see our young children prophesy, until we see this place is filled with the presence of God, until we see that young men are having visions, then like Elijah, we should not give ourselves rest. We have to come to the place that we strip this body that God do a new thing in me. Let me also see that which you have said and declared in your word. See, you know, we go into the end of life. There's a reason why the Bible says the lamp will wipe away and will wipe our tears from our eyes. Not because we go and we, we just see, oh, how terrible we have been on earth. Not at all. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this world shall by no means be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. There's a reason why he did not say the glory that will be revealed to us. He said the glory that will be revealed in us. What it means that all this world that we've been knocked by a little headache, a little arthritis, a little back pain, all this world, the glory of God is in us. And you go to heaven and you realize that, oh, I had power and authority. All this while, the glory was already in me. And you never assessed it. You realize that, you see, we'll be weeping. That, yeah, the lamp will be wiping away our tears because we miss the season and the time. Therefore, Jesus approached Jerusalem and he wept and he cried and he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, only if you could know the season of your peace, only if you could know, but you did not. Let us not come to the end of our time when we don't realize the season and the timing that we are in. A lot of things are happening in this last few years. It is not only the COVID. There have been nations in the East where locusts, you know, you know, destroyed everything. Millions of locusts. Things are happening very fast. Let us not get out of this season. And all we could remember was that all oh, COVID and we stayed at home. <coughs> COVID. Is that all? Is that all? I want to remember this season. And I said, wow. When I checked and saw the timing that we are in the last days, I saw the power of God pouring out on our flesh. Shall we be on our feet? That you may know and understand the season that you are in. That God will open your eyes to see. God is calling many. I want to set myself. I want to give all my heart to it. That God let us see that our pouring of the Spirit which he declared through your prophet Joel. God said this many years ago. Do you know that during Pentecost, during this time, Peter and the apostles, when they gathered to see God, for 10 days they fasted, they were crying out, and the Spirit of the Lord came. That was last days. Do you know that last year was last days and we missed it? This year is also last days, we could miss it. Next year is also last days. So it's the right season, but if you don't do anything, you won't see anything. As a church, can we dream again? Can we come to that place and know that God is going to shake Edinburgh through this group of people? Can we still believe that God will shake the foundations of this city through me and through you? Can we believe again? Let us not be like old men whose dreams are fading and they can't dream again. It looks abstract. It's so old. We tried it. 
in pastor so so and so time oh we gathered together and then what happened the dream faded but this is the sign that God is pouring out his spirit and the spirit of God is bubbling up in you you dream you believe irrespective of age gender irrespective of who you are where you have come from whether your past your father was a prophet or not he says that no I was neither a prophet nor a son of a prophet I was a keeper of sheep but the word of the Lord came to me today the word of the Lord has come to you especially you will you take this word with boldness will you take this word with boldness and say God my children I don't want my children to be prophesying about messy things on TV all they talk about is aliens and, and princesses that my children will be declaring the word of God they will be seeing visions and prophesying if you've got a child or ever dreamed to have a child pray you want to bring us all before God Joshua said that as for me and my house we will serve the Lord I want my house to be on fire it is said of Philip that even his four daughters prophesied I want my household to be that household of prophecy in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and give thanks unto God lebro kadisa bragada saya baya boro do bosia baya be reba da da ba si kada ntere de bro ne de de bo rabaya kataski bregedesia bragada ye bodo bro kada sia barada do ye badan da 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 ba si ka bragada sia ba re de 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 bosi ka ya barada da ba sia de reba da 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 ba si ka ya ba rabaya bo ka bere de de bo reba da ne de de bosi ka ya ba re de 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 bosi ka ya barada ba re ne de de bosi ka ya barado rababa ya be ka bo rabades re de 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 bosi bragada ya ba re ne de de bosi ka ya ba rada da 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 ba si ka ya be the word of god comes now but to accomplish the purpose for which it was sent it is this season it is this time god is declaring for you oh god for you specifically that this word has come that your household will be a household of difference that your household will be a household of fire that your children will be set on fire that they will prophesy that they will declare the word of god that visions will become a common thing in the name of jesus randa ya basika tayaba regada si ya barada da bo renerere de bosi bragada le belele le bosi bragado ye barada da da basi bragada ye bom bragade si bragada re barada da do si baraba re barada do si bregede rababa ya baraba pour out your spirit lord pour out your spirit lord pour out your spirit lord le si kata ya barada bo you know bible says blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness see god will always feel when you come empty when you come full of yourself there's no space <coughs> for God to fail. We want to come to that place that our young men, our children, our youth are hungry for the things of God. I personally believe that hunger is a gift. That God stir up in me a hunger for the things of God. We want to pray this over all young people our children irrespective of their age do you know John the Baptist in his mother's womb was filled with the spirit so whether they are one year two year or even in the womb that they have such a hunger for the things of God God is about to do something special in this season but if you are not hungry for spiritual things then God will bypass this church to a neighborhood church because there are people who are determined to see God's word come to pass and we want to be that church we want to be that household that God stir up a hunger of the things of God in me let's pray in the name of Jesus
No bone narabasi cabra gade si bro narabaha. Redada yaba cabo si brege de basi bragada. Rambada bada braga ziba nerebe. Ye madada basi kayabada bo. Rebaba bada braga do si bregede. Oh Lord, stay up, O God. Hunger, O God, within me. Randa randa basi kayabada bante ame. That I will seek you. That I will pursue you. That I will run after you. That I will run after you. Ragadasi Yabaraba. He says, Draw me, Lord. Draw me, Lord. Draw me, Lord. And I will run after you. Ragadasi Yakatayaba. He says, Deep calls unto deep at the noise of the waters. Right? Lord, let the deep in me calls up unto the deep of you. Razayanda Rarabasi Kayaba. Ye banada da basi kaya ba, re de 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 bo saba kaya ba, le banda da 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 basi braga de. This is indeed the season. This, this is indeed the season, and this is the time when God is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. And our sons and daughters will prophesy. A young man will see visions. Our old men will dream dreams. Lord, honor your word in our lives and do not pass us by. Bring us to a place that we have a deep hunger for the things of the Spirit. Make us usable for your glory. Help us that we may empty ourselves, O God, to receive of the outpouring of the Spirit. Bring this church to that place. Let the neighbors and the people of this time know that we are the ones that you have set apart and sanctified. That in the last days that you show and declare your glory, to the nations of the world. Lord, do it again in us. And just as you use Elijah, make us usable for your glory. We give you all the praise and honor for what you're doing and what you're about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.